Hello again. In this video we're going to take a look at how we can actually begin working on a new program in Robot C. Uh, so we're going to look at that process. As you can see here I've already opened Robot C. I have it sitting there on my screen and I have also got uh, one of my pseudocode practice problems. This is actually pseudocode practice problem number three uh, in Notepad sitting off to the side there. I'm going to use my pseudocode to help me write my robot C program and make use of what I've already done there at this point. So let's go ahead and see the process that we use for this. Uh, first thing we want to do is go to robot C and we're going to go through the same process that we'll go through every time to start a new program in there. First step is always going to be go to file menu. So I'll select that. Second step choose open sample program and when this uh, window comes up here I am going to scroll down and look for the PLTW folder there it is I'm going to open the PLTW folder and in there I'll find PLTW template which is the file that I want I'm going to double click and select that one and open it up and as you can see over in this area in the robot C window we've got some things that are already laid out for us there which is going to help our work a bit uh, up here in the top section on line 2 beginning with slash asterisk right here uh, this actually begins a comment section which is going to be for you and I to keep track of information related to this program robot C is basically going to ignore this so this is just for the humans so I'm going to click after project title and anytime I have a colon like here I always want to put two spaces and then type my title sudo code practice number three so you put the title that's appropriate for the program you're doing team members for this one it's just going to be me be sure and capitalize and do this correctly two spaces and the date section is going to be the class that you're in. I'll just put A for this one. Now we always do a task description. The task description is going to be one or two sentences that describe what this program is going to do. It doesn't go into a great deal of detail. It just gives you the overall basics of the program. So we want to keep this pretty short but be as accurate in describing it as we can. Now <clears throat> when I did my pseudocode for this program over in Notepad, I actually did a task description for this. So what I can do at this point is actually highlight that and hopefully I've caught all of that and I can copy it and then over in Robot C I can actually right click there and paste that and looks like if I scroll over that it's come in in pretty good shape. The only thing about that is it's running outside my window and I'd like to keep that in if I can. So what I want to do is just kind of click here and do a little work to straighten it up and fix it so it stays within the window there. So I've got my task description. Uh, I can do the same thing with my pseudocode. So I'm going to come over and just collect all of that and right click and copy. And if I select here, two spaces, control V to paste it in. You can see it comes in. Once again, I've got to do a little formatting to make it look good. And I found if I click in front of number two and use my tab key, that's a fast way to push it over up here and want to tab that and I'm just going to tab these and be sure they're all lined up it takes a little bit of time but it makes it much more readable and handy for us to use to keep these lined up. All 
All right, so that's in pretty good shape right there. This would probably be a good point to save this. I would go File, Save As, and then save this to your H drive right there. Uh, I would call it pseudocode practice number three and put it in there, save it. Once you've got that done, you can actually start working directly from your code. To build your program in Robot C. So as we come down here, I want to see my pseudocode, and my first step is program starts. Well, as you've learned, task main, and especially especially this curly brace right here is what starts my program. And you can see the comment over here, program begins, insert code within the curly braces. So all the code that I put between these two curly braces is going to be my program. All right, so I want to be sure I insert the commands there. My second step, first motor turns on. All right, well, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to open the plus sign in front of motors, in front of natural language, which is where I'm going to work quite a bit. Uh, let's look at movement right there which is where I want to be to start a motor I want this command that says start motor so I'm gonna bring it over and drop it in at that point right there now a couple of things I'm gonna to want to identify the motor that I'm using and I'm gonna be using a right motor and a left motor and I want to have my right motor come on first. And I'm going to name it this way. And I always want to identify the speed. Now, unless something tells me differently, I want this coming on at full power, which is 127. So I'll set that right there. And that takes care of step two in my pseudocode. Step three, check to see when a switch is pressed. All right, well, that's an until command. And that one is going to be an until bump switch. So we'll bring that in here and drop it. And once again, I can name that bump switch. The delay time is a, a little bit of amount of time that I want to put in here, which gives me enough time to get my finger off the switch before the command actually activates. And I have found that if I put in 150 milliseconds, that usually works really well with a bump switch. So that takes care of step number three. Step number four is turn off the first motor when the bump switch is pressed. Well, stop motor, bring that over, and the motor that I want to stop is right motor. Wait two seconds. All right, wait, I have a section right here. If I want two seconds, I can just put the wait command. If I want something in millions of a second, or actually thousands of a second, I'd get wait in milliseconds. So let's just get the wait command right here. And we're going to wait two seconds. And as you can see right there, this is pretty easy to code. Once I start locating my commands over on the left, I can just grab them and pull them in here. So, this is basically how you go about writing your code and putting it together. At this point, I would save what I have, and then I would continue through the rest of it, making sure that I understand this step 11, program ends, is this final curly brace down here at the bottom. Go ahead and see if you can finish your program, get all your commands in place, and then a little later we'll see if we can actually run this, check our programs and make sure they're working correctly. Good luck. Be sure you save this in your H drive, and we'll work with you a little later. Thanks a lot.